we're doing a small chartreuse low water comet. Chartreuse is a really, I, I fish a lot of orange flies. I, I went through a series of years where I fished a lot of chartreuse and I went to orange and now I'm fishing grays and purples. Daiichi, boss steelhead hook, uh, black bucktail tail, and this is uh, bonefish tan crystal flash. Really nice. Not, I, I think we call it a tasteful appointment. Not too flashy. Laggerton, mini flat breed. This is an Elk River estuary fly. I'll bet it will work in all kinds of places where you have fairly clear water. I like to go under the tail once. Give ourselves that little chartreuse body. Nice and slender. Now if you wanted to, if you made that body shorter, you could put on a little bit of uh, chenille, but I, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put on a chartreuse hackle. You can use Mets. Soft hackles are very nice. This happens to be a saddle hackle. And if I leave myself room, I'm going to put on some bead chain eyes and if I don't I won't and bottom line is why do I use bead chain if, if I'm fishing deep water I will use lead eyes but if it's not very deep water say six feet eight feet I'll either use an unweighted fly with a sinking line or just bead chain it just goes down nice and slow we got room for our bead chain there. Let's throw it on. Always tie a knot before you put on the bead chain. This bead chain is pesky stuff. And if you use a uni loop knot, which I do, make sure that your loop knot is small enough that it can't get over your bead chain when you're playing a fish. I've made this mistake, folks. What happens is there are seams on the bead chain. I'm wrapping underneath there. Hold it secure. I don't mess with super glue, but you can. If your loop gets around that bead chain, depending on where the position of that seam is, it can cut you off right in the middle of your loop, and Mr. or Miss Ms. Fish will go swimming away and you will be sad for the morning.